What up gamers, I'm Sir Mav and welcome to another Apex Legends video. Today we're going to be talking about the new firing range game mode option and some other changes within Apex Legends that have made its way into the latest update for the game. Previously you could only get here via the training option when selecting a game mode, but of course you had to be lifeline and do a bunch of other things, but the devs have finally given us a full playground where we can test out each legend, their abilities, as well as all the guns and their attachments. And this includes the hop ups too, so now I can properly test out each new update as they come and verify the damage data for each new weapon that is implemented into the game. They've also placed in some maxed out armor target dummies that you can shoot at, but the data on the sum of the guns is still inaccurate compared to what they are on the regular targets. This was only the case with headshots for dummies with the Alternator, EVA 8, the Mose, P2020 pistol, and the RE45 auto pistol. The numbers on the actual targets are still accurate in game, so no need to worry that you're getting headshot for 99 damage by an EVA 8. Unless they have a double tap hop up, which in that case, see you later kid. In any case, the firing range is a great place for players to test out new legends that they may not be as familiar with within the game. Definitely helps in understanding some of their key abilities and may even teach a few new tricks or data points you may not even know about. Such as Octane's jump pad. Most of you Octane mains would have definitely have known this, but if you jump while getting boosted by the jump pad, you can actually boost yourself higher than when you would just walk or run over it. Or the fact that we know melee damage is 30 on a normal profile legend, so it'll take a total of 4 hits to knock them if they have no armor equipped. The firing range also showcases that Watson's Fence does 10 damage per tick, Caustic's Gas starts ticking at 4 and maxes out at 10 for every second an enemy is within it, and that each bomb on Bangalore and Gibraltar's ulti will hit for 40 each. Which is why it can definitely be a game changer if you get hit with 2 or more of these bombs. Hell, you can even practice Pathfinder's grapple and shotgun scenario if you'd like within firing range. Speaking of shotguns, I was actually curious of how much of a difference the shotgun bolt attachment makes to the rate of fire of each shotgun. So I hopped in firing range and tested it out. Now although it's an obvious choice when out on the map looting to pick up a higher tiered shotgun bolt, you might be surprised on the actual difference it makes to the rate of fire of each shotgun. What I found interesting was that it wasn't a straight incremental increase to each shotgun. The bolt impacts the RPM rate for each shotgun differently. If you look at this table you can see the increase in fire rate of each shotgun depending on which bolt is equipped, and like I said they're random increases based on the shotgun. For instance, the EVA undergoes a 13, 20, and 26% increase in the fire rate as you go up each tier of shotgun bolt, but the PK only increases 3, 6, and 12% for each respective tier level. So although you will feel the increase on the EVA in Mozambique, the PK's increases are so minuscule that you might barely be able to tell the difference. Of course the PK does do twice the damage per shot compared to the EVA, but an EVA 8 with a shotgun bolt and double tap hop up can be brutal out in the ring. Now to everyone's favorite gun that's all the hype, let's talk about the changes to the charge rifle. This gun has been the hot topic since season 3 as it can be a pain to fight against when there's little to no cover between you and the enemy. A couple of weeks in they brought down the amount of shots you could take with the stock mag and increased the ammo you use per shot on this gun, but you could still increase this by obtaining energy mags. Well now with the latest update the charge rifle is no longer allowed a magazine option, so you only have 12 bullets per mag which equates to 4 shots before you reload. They've also decreased the rate of fire down to 46 rounds per minute from the previous 51 that I calculated, and the charge rifle now has a damage fall off at range. So once you get past the 150 meter mark from your target, the damage to the body will drop off from 90 down to 74, and after 200 meters it will drop off from 74 down to 68. Now these changes were officially put into a hotfix last week, but I've still seen some community comments that the gun is still OP even after this update, but I think the issue with this weapon is the fact that it has no recoil. I think if the respawn team added just a slight vertical recoil to this weapon as it's firing off would place this gun in a better spot. But of course, that's just me. What are your thoughts on the charge rifle nerfs? Do you think these changes have put this gun in a more balanced position? Let me know down in the comments below. So with that, I've gone through my weapon data table and updated it to the changes I spoke of here on this video as well as some other minute changes. And as usual, you can find the link to the entire damage table down in the description box below. But that's it for today. Just wanted to give you all a quick update on the new firing range and some of the changes Respawn has made to the weapons within game. So as usual, if you enjoyed the intel, drop this video a like and tap fire subscribe for more on Apex Legends and other games I cover. But until next time, this is Sir Mav, signing off.